Alright hey, so welcome to the extended tutorial for how to do this dreamy space cinematic animation on Blender. Before you guys watch this extended version, make sure you watch the short edited video first that you can find in the top corner or in the description. It just summarizes everything, it's way more fun to watch, and it'll make much more sense when you come back to this video. So this is going to be me going from start to finish, progressing in detail, and giving you a chance to understand my full workflow. So yeah, we're going to get right into it and I'll explain everything along. I'll enable screencast keys so you'll be able to see what buttons I'm pressing. Um, so yeah, let's get right into it. So we're going to delete everything. Okay, so the first thing we got to set up is the astronaut, right? If you search astronaut 3D model, you'll come across a lot of good looking um, 3D models. Um, if you really want to ensure high quality, you will have to get paid assets. Like look at this uh, spacesuit NASA, $35. And it just it's like, look at this detail. Like there's no way um you know like a youtube tutorial is going to be able to explain to you how to how to do this by yourself it's just not um productive so you know um invest yourself in learning how to find uh, models online i'm actually going to be using a free model i found from a website called sketchfab um, if you guys didn't know sketchfab is like a 3d model platform it's like the best platform ever it's owned by epic games now but um it's a 3d model platform where like creators and modelers, um, you know, upload their work and creations and models. In my opinion, it's uh, probably the best source of free content um, on the internet, you know. Um, so if you just search astronaut, um, you're going to immediately come across uh, a lot of results. Um, I'm just going to click downloadable right here to filter out like all the downloadable ones. And that will filter out like, you know, more free ones. There are paid ones, of course, but like, look at this. There are already some pretty usable um, free stuff like, you know, that, that. And yeah, we're, what we're going to be using is this right here. Like, um, look at this. We're just really lucky to find this on the internet. It's a free downloadable model, you know, under cop under Creative Commons attribution. And look at this, like this, this, this can definitely work. It's got the wrinkles and everything. So we're going to, we're going to be using this model. Um, hopefully you understand a bit of the, you know, model gathering process from that. So once I import this in Blender, um, it's immediately going to come up with its own rig because it's animated and rigged. So that's even like a luckier find for us. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to select the armature and I'm going to head over here to viewport display and I'm just going to click tick in front. This way we'll be able to see the bones no matter what, like, um, and that will just make things easier. Um, you'll, you'll see that like the, they're collect, they're connected and gathered in this weird collection um, and root system. And that's, that could be a bit annoying, but um, you don't really need these two nodes. Um, and you can just scale this down and then like, now you have like an actual, just, just an, a normal armature basically. Um, let's make sure this is like um, to scale. So we can just go here, go to item and check the dimensions. So let's see on the Z axis. Wow. It's uh, this guy's four meters. Okay. That's not going to work. So we're just going to scale down the armature. And so this guy's like once, yeah, look at this 176. That, that's probably right. Like, like that's, that's pretty much, uh, I'm just to make this bigger and yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, so we're just going to go right into setting up this astronaut and, um, posing it into the correct position. So to customize its position, you do that by heading to pose mode. And what I'll do here is I'll press A to select all, right? Um, I'll go to pose, clear transform, and I'll clear all, right? And now we end up with a T pose. We're not done yet because we have all these keyframes, right? And we need to delete them. So I'm just going to press delete. Um, and now we actually ha uh, have reset our, or their armature to a T pose that's actually usable. So there you go, you know? Um, now we have a rig and let's just start setting this up. All right. So firstly, I'm going to head back to pose mode and you know, this is where you take your time and select each joint and bone group and just start, uh, moving it along different axes. Um, I'm actually going to recommend changing the transformation orientations to local. Um, that's just going to make sure that like all the bones are rotating the way they should be and not the way like the entire world is set to is that make sense so so yeah guys just take your time with this until you end up with a good looking position i'm going to position mine so it looks like the astronaut is sort of reaching out um and yeah i'll see you guys when i'm done with that 
All right, so here we're back um, with a customized pose. I spent a little time on it, um, just rotating all these fingers and joints, and I, I'm pretty happy with this uh, pose. And I even went further ahead and just went throughout the timeline and sort of just animated the arms sort of moving. And I know there'll be a camera set up right in front of this uh, finger right here. So I want it just, to, just for that to move as if uh, this astronaut was reaching for a butterfly landing on his fingers. Um, that is the main idea. So, you know, adding a little bit of animations and life, you can obviously do much more, um, but I'll just leave it at that. I think we have a pretty good result. Um, let's take care of the texturing and maybe even set up a lighting system. So we're going to go to the materials preview and it looks like everything is looking good. Okay, so I did some extra things. Um, so for the material, I went a little bit further and um, strengthened the normal map. So we will have like, like stronger lighting. I also uh, separated this glass um, mesh from the astronaut helmet. So I could dedicate it to a separate like mirror material um, instead of it being um, combined with the other textures. So let's light our scene. So we're going to go straight to shading um, and we're going to change this to cycles, GPU, denoise, 200 samples for viewport and like 500 for rendering. Let's add a quick spotlight, maybe like from there. Disable the shadow background and just bump the spotlight up. Oh, yeah. So as you can see, we're getting a result. Uh, this is even this is kind of looking cool. So let's set up a camera. So let's hop into these this camera. I'm going to render region only. I'm going to use my hotkey to fly this camera around, which is like very cool. Uh, okay, let's frame it up roughly to the camera settings. Um, I'm going to reduce the focal length to like 30 and then zoom in just so that we can introduce a little bit more perspective. I kind of want to separate the butterfly from the helmet. All right, uh, let's light this thing a little bit more. So we created uh, another spotlight that's purple and put it as a, a backlight just for the aesthetics of the scene, like a mint, minty color. I think because I think that could potentially look pretty cool. Yeah, and as you can see, this this looks pretty, pretty decent. So yeah, I'm, I think I'm pretty happy with this lighting. Um, let's quickly set up the background, right? Um, so for the background that I use, it's actually pretty interesting. I actually um, generated that HDRI from an AI image generator. So here, let me demonstrate. So for the prompt, I would type in something like um, space nebular um, stars background and maybe even add like uh, blue just to guide it a little bit. Um, I'm using a stable diffusion web UI. It's like a whole other thing to explain and set up, but hopefully you like, I'll just, I'm just showing you that this is a pretty creative way to come up with, um, you know, uh, secondary element results um, pretty easily. So you can see it's like doing its thing and then, you know, at the end, you have like a unique texture you and you know, a lot of times they won't work usually as HDRIs, but uh, I was just, I just needed like a little texture and um, this just happens to be a really um, cool way. There are good space HDRIs out there. You can use any free image and then like, you know, you can wrap it up well enough that like a close up shot is gonna look pretty good. For the video, I actually used this, um, AI generated image. Uh, it's just a little bit cleaner. Um, uh, I actually ran this through an AI upscaler. So like it's even like more AI based than before. And this just makes everything a little bit sharper as well. Um, so that that's pretty much the whole mode. So you can, you can see it's like very, very cool. And you also get like the reflections um, and stuff like that. All right, let's go ahead and add in some, you know, butterflies and get the whole particle systems uh, set up. So here we are back in Sketchfab. And as we can see, I searched butterfly and you're immediately going to find very usable results, uh, sometimes for free. 
So I think I ended up using one of these ones. I'm just gonna go ahead and use this simple butterfly model, you know, just use any one you'd like. All right, here we have our butterfly um, brought into Blender. Um, let's check the textures real quick. And yeah, the textures seem fine. Um, we're gonna actually, we're actually going to be tweaking the textures like the colors and stuff like that. Um, just to customize it a little bit more. All right, so we're going to head to the shader editor again. Um, we can run this through a hue and saturation node and you could, you know, change the colors this way. Like, look at this. Uh, I'm, I'm going to make it like a little orange butterfly kind of thing. So let's just add an emission, make this like an orangey yellow. I'll just make it yellow. Let's just use the original image texture. Um, plug that to the factor and then just sort of play with the uh, contrast values. I think this is inverted. There you go. Like if, if I were to put this next to the astronaut, you could see like it has like a nice little glowing, glowing effect. So now let's work on uh, animating this butterfly and creating the particle system. Uh, first thing I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna put this really far away from the camera. And I'm actually going to start by uh, going to edit mode and rotating this by 90 degrees so we have it like flat on the ground and facing upwards or whatever northwards or whatever and i'm also going to press ctrl a and apply the rotation you know maybe you apply the scale and rotation uh, right now the origins are messed up so uh it's averaging it out with the wings so that's not even the geometry so we'll go to edit mode press l to select this link and then go to select it cursor to select it and now it's in the middle of that now we can go to objects the origin to 3d cursor and now it's like by that middle and which is pretty good so the way we're animating this is we're going to be creating sh shape keys and we're going to be switching between like a shape key of it with its wings up and then wings down you might have learned this from like one of Ian Huber's tutorials uh it's very similar on how to do like moths and stuff like that so let's go into shape keys right here and as you can see it's just like uh there's no shape keys right now um let's create a basis okay so a basis i'm actually going to select this by pressing l l l that selects like entire groups of mesh and then wrote make sure to make sure to select the pivot point to the 3d cursor so that we're rotating by 3d cursor and let's just uh flatten this out you know so we know that it's like flat. That looks pretty good. So let's add a new key. And uh, this time, maybe 60. So that sort of works. And then now you can see by changing this value, we're sort of making it flat, which is very cool. It's like a very, very simple animation. Um, let's animate this, you know, straight away. Now, you can use, like, you know, noise modifiers to automate this, but I did that before, and I just found that that was, like, really janky and glitchy. Um, I'll show you what I mean, just, like, real quick. So, if we just animate this, modifiers, noise, and you can see, okay, so, you know, we could, you know, reduce the scale, but then it's, it's like, it's slow, but, like, kind of half glitchy, and then it doesn't flap all the way, and it's just not natural at all. Um, I'm sure there's ways to make it work, but um, I, I think the best way to do this is to just manually animate it. You would just need to press auto key, um, go here, press like go to the next few frames and flap down. Just get a get a get a sense for the speed, and then press go up, go down, and you, you'll you'll be able to fill out a lot of seconds really really quickly. Look at that. And now we have a butterfly. So very cool, very easy way to animate. Now to set up the particle system, like we're gonna use this main butterfly, right? To base off our particle system. And the thing is, if we just do that, it's just gonna copy a bunch of these um, animations. And you're gonna really be able to notice that it's just like, they're all gonna be moving exactly the same way at the exact time. So that's not gonna be helpful. So what I'll do is I'll actually duplicate this butterfly, move it like down and I might, I'll just select everything and just shift the butterfly out of range. So there it's like slap, it's like flapping at a different rate and uh, frequency. We'll just do that for like maybe a few more. Look at that. 
So now we have a little a little collection of butterflies. So let's let's set up the particle system. It's gonna be a pretty big thing, so let's get right into it. Alright, so setting up the particle systems, it's actually a very easy thing to do. It's just messing around with the settings that take a little bit of time. Okay, so we're gonna be starting off with creating a little cube, like a little particle system area. I'm just gonna create it around this astronaut pretty closely, to be honest, for now. Let's immediately go to the object properties, go to viewport display, and change the display to wire. So now we can see through it, right? Which is good. One thing is in cycles, this is a still a block of cube, and that's because, you know, it's still a cube. Give it a transparent shader real quick. We just want the cube to host the particle system, and then the particle system will, you know, base off that butterfly mesh. So that's how it's gonna work. Let's just go to particle and add a particle systems and immediately it's just you know it, it's it's going crazy so there's a few things we have to do uh firstly um a thousand is like you know that's a lot of butterflies uh well, like as, especially it, like uh, right now it's spread over 200 frames we're just gonna make this all frame start and end on one frame and then lifetime you know we can make this like like 900 it doesn't matter um, and now, you know, that's that's what a thousand things look like. Um, also, we'll go to source and go to volume. So it's emitting from inside. So a thousand is way too much. So let's just let's just put this at a hundred or something. There you go. Now it's like much more manageable. So we want to set up like a floating, you know, flowing butterfly particle system. And the problem right now is like it's not that right now. It's it's just falling by gravity. So let's fix that. Uh, we'll go to field weights, and here you'll find all the different, like, effectors um, on the particle system. Th this is, like, all, like, physical based, so, like, you know, if you come here, and we will do this later, we'll be, you know, adding force fields, and, like, you can mess around with all these winds and turbulence settings. We'll be adding turbulence later. So, right now, we'll just go back to field weights, and we'll disable gravity, so immediately, there's no gravity. But it's still being ejected by its normals. Um, so we'll actually have to go back to source, right? We'll, we'll have to go back to velocity and here you can see that the normal is set to one. So we'll, you might even set this at 0 0.01, just so that it, it kind of has like this, the slightest bit of movement. Maybe that's like too vague, but you see, it's like, sl it's like almost floating and we'll have like turbulence fields that will like move this around. And look at this. It's like basically working. So let's, let's select our butterfly now. And that's what we'll do. So we'll go back into render. We'll render as collection, right? Because we have a group. We haven't put this in a collection yet. So let's let's do that quickly. Select these all. Press M. Move new collection. Butterfly collection. Okay. So now we have a collection. We can you know select that. Now it's really small. We can scale this to, to the correct ish size, like you know something like that. And also we'll make it like, uh, make sure to include scale randomness, definitely, because that just helps break it up so much. Um, okay, right now we have a problem, and that is the rotations are the same. Look at it, it's like very repetitive still. Let's enable rotation, and here's by velocity in here. You'll just have to mess around with your own settings and choose which one works. So I want it to go this way, yeah. And I want to randomize it a little bit, so yeah, this is sort of the effect I, I kind of want. Alright, so there you go. After spending a little bit of time, I managed to get the rotation to something that I would consider pretty good. So now they're just sort of hovering, and it still doesn't make sense, and you know, you can mess around with the particle set settings even more, and you know, change the randomize and all this stuff. Uh, but I think this looks pretty good. I think uh, we can go to the next stage and add in some turbulent fields. So we're going to try and add a force field. It's going to be a turbulence. Turbulence settings. Um, let's just see what it does for now. So you can see the butterflies are starting to go all over the place. Um, and that's unfortunate because we kind of want them to stay in like, you know, near the near the area. And this force field is kind of like we have to adjust the settings of the force field. So let's just let's so let's try messing around with the settings. So right now, again, it's going all over the place. So 
we'll increase the strength maybe and increase the size definitely to like six and the flow well let's 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 put it at 10 see what happens right okay so at 10 it's sort of starting to fall follow a, a pattern right that's pretty cool so this is sort of what we want and th this is like the cool part right uh so right now for this particular shot we're just going to condense this box just a little bit and you know for each camera shot you can create different butterfly particle systems but for this shot it's i want it to all be condensed in this little area so we can really see uh the butterflies moving and stuff like that yeah you know and this this will work like look at this it's like beautiful it's like a very beautiful pattern uh tell you what we can even just you know expand this upwards and onwards and we'll just you know cram the number to like 120 just to compensate and that's just gonna help ensure that like there are no blank spots let's see what this looks like in render mode and wow look at that that's like that's really coming to life huh like it's pretty cool what we can do firstly um you know this still might be too smooth for you you might want some extra win and you know you can always add in different force fields and see what they do you know mess around with the settings and now they're going upwards uh and you got to remember this is like we got to imagine it in real time so it's got like one two three uh one thing you might notice is sometimes the butterflies that they might go through the astronaut which is not very convincing you know so a uh, quick way to fix that is to just uh select the astronaut and just add a collision um modifier and this just this just tells blender like hey okay this uh mesh is now an object that physics needs to keep in mind and you can do that with uh, you know the back backpack thing too so um also another thing is if you don't really like how like each butterfly is coming in you could always just uh change the seed and that's just com gonna completely randomize things and just Okay, so I think I have something I'm pretty happy with, and I think it's it's just going to work overall. So uh, the next thing to do is to make sure we uh, bake this particle simulation to cache. We're just going to have like one consistent animation that's baked into memory. So we'll just open up cache, and then just uh, you can you can press bake, and now it's like fully baked in, and like you can scrub over it, and like you, you won't be able to change the settings anymore. And if you want to do that, you just have to delete, bake, change your setting, and then bake again. But the point is, right now, now they're like actual like you know animations. Let's quickly set up like uh, the main butterfly that's going to be landing on a finger. We'll duplicate the butterfly, but we'll separate it from its butterfly collection, and we'll put it here. Let's say it lands there, we want it to land there, and so we do that. All right, let's start keyframing. So this is when, when we will start animating. And I'll just make sure it like loosely follows my fingers. All right, so I think I'm pretty happy with overall the animation of this main butterfly landing on the finger. So I think that looks pretty good. So let's uh, move on to the next step. So we're going to be adding some space dust now, which um, and the process is very similar to the butterfly, and it's even easier. So I'll show you. You know, the box spawning the butterfly, we can call this butterfly spawn, and then for the dust, we'll just call it like space dust or something, right? We'll just display it as wires as well. Let's create a little dust particle. So we'll just create a little icosphere. That's going to be enough, right? Let's move. Let's move it to the butterflies. And for the shading, let's call it space dust. We'll just add like a simple translucent shader so we can pick up some of that like spotlight. Just make it a little bit green. And there you go. That's like space dust, right? That's that, it's just a particle. It's just like a simple particle. We will add a particle system. We'll just go back to solid just to know what we're doing. All right, same thing. Frame start, frame end. Um, maybe space dust. Uh, let's go to 500 and see what happens. Emit from volume and render as uh, object this time. And then we'll just select that icosphere. That's what it was. And yeah, you can see, we'll start to see these tiny particle particles. And we'll obviously scale randomness to maximum. Go to render and let's see what we have. Yeah, you can see we, we have like this white 
uh, space dust, basically. It just helps to contextualize the 3D space a little bit. So it like, if, if there was no space dust, it, it's just a little bit hard to tell the three dimensional space, but with the space dust, and if the camera was moving, like you, you would really be able to tell, especially with all the depth of field that we'll be adding and stuff like that. So um, another issue is right now, the space dust is still being treated the same way that butterflies are. And that is that they're moving with the force fields. Um, and let's say we wanted to make a still, right? So one way to fix that would be to make all the instances real, right? Um, once you're happy with that, make sure you're happy with it. And you click this. It's going to spawn a bunch of icospheres that you're then going to move into a collection, definitely, and called space dust icosphere. Definitely, because you want this to be in a collection so you can close the 500 uh, items. So now we can disable space dust and maybe even delete it, right? And now we will have individual like space dust that like stay still, which is very cool. So there you go. Um, and finally, we're just going to be adding a simple fog to fi finalize and finish this up and we'll be setting up some camera settings. Okay. So let's add another cube even, you know, there's a lot of cubes in this area. Let's go into the shading editor and add a new material. I'm going to call it fog. That's what I like to call my volumes. I'll add in a principled volume, plug this to volume and okay. Wow. It's very foggy right now, huh? Okay. So let's turn this density down to like 0.1. Okay. That's a, that's a very low. 0.5. Let's see what we have with 0.5. Let's change the color to like a minty color. That's really going to help it out. All right. So there you go. I've set my fog uh, colors and settings, and I think that looks pretty good. So let's just finalize this with uh, some camera animations, depth of field and all that. Um, okay. So let's also create an empty. We'll create a sphere as an empty. Right now, this is an empty that we'll use to control the camera's focus. We'll call this camera focus because that's what it is. We'll just put this um, on the helmet first. Uh, go back to camera, enable depth of field, and just type in that camera focus. And now we'll focus on the helmet. For the depth of field, we can you know go in advanced and like you know reduce the uh, f-stop, uh, make it an aperture. Uh, look at this. Now we have a nice bokeh and I have all these extra like I have the pro lens add on by William Landgren That's just like really helpful. Um, that makes like bokeh realistic. So look at this. Watch this. I add add pro lens and now we have like Professional bokeh with like fringes and stuff and I can control the density of this fringe. It's a, a very very cool add-on Let's animate the camera. So we'll just keyframe this um, animate rotation, rotation, and go to frame 90. And we'll also animate the camera focus to shift to the hand, like maybe right after like 11 seconds. It will just boom. And look at how cinematic that is. Like that is like so super cinematic. And we'll also change the camera keyframes to vector. So it's like not, not slowing down. And look at that. That's just like, it's, it's just, it looks so pretty. Uh, let's, let's go see the color management. Um, I'm using like a relatively new color management now, instead of just filmic, I'm actually using AGX, which is this, it's like a superior color space. Um, it's called AGX and it's just, it works so well. It handles all the highlight colors very realistically. It's the most accurate color space so far in Blender. Um, I'll probably do a video about that at some point. Okay, let, let, let's show a couple more tricks just to finalize this. So this is like, you know, the main kind of hero shot. But let's set up another camera. We'll add depth of field and focus on the camera focus again. And let's change from perspective to panoramic. And now we're going to have that fish eye lens effect. Right now it's like, you know, zoomed out. We, we'll change this back to like 50. And now we're talking. Now we're going to, maybe not 50, maybe even 35. Um, let's change it to two for anamorphic. Like, look at that changing anamorphic. And now we have like this cool effect at pro lens. 
Um, yeah, okay, so that's been a start to finish look at uh, this butterfly scene. Hopefully you'll learn something from this. Um, if you end up making anything from it, feel free to tag me or send me a message or whatever. Thanks for watching everyone and you know, stay tuned. We make cool stuff here. All right, bye.